Hello everyone, welcome to Crime Time News. I'm your host, Kaylee. I'm just doing a quick update. Um, a few months back, I um, did my first Crime Time News uh, with Serial Killers and Seltzer, and I reported on uh, the death of Sutton Mosser, um, and we were waiting to see what happened with the mother um who was uh she allegedly stabbed sutton mosser multiple times on september 16th uh two days after sutton's birthday um her mother is justine johnson 22 years old um they are from oscoda michigan i believe um and if you guys remember correctly, this is the this is the uh, report. Michigan mom says SpongeBob told her to kill her three-year-old daughter. Um, if you guys remember correctly, she was supposedly coming down off of um, heroin withdrawals. Um, I know I did a little bit of research back when I did the first report, um, and I. It was very hard for me to find like how long you actually withdraw from heroin um, I guess that also depends on if she relapsed during that time period but at that time she said that she had been uh, going through withdrawals for two weeks and it seemed like the worst part of it like happens within the first 72 hours and didn't see anything that happened or that like um, any hallucinations or anything crazy like that was happening up to two weeks later. Um, so, um, when we went over her, um, like movements for that day, she was kind of all over the place. Um, so maybe during that time period, she was, I don't know, obtaining some kind of substance. Um, but... I was waiting for February 4th, which was supposed to be her preliminary hearing, um, and I had a heck of a time trying to find any updates on what was going on with her, um, what was going on with Justine. Um, so I finally found some information. Um, so, uh, Sutton's death happened on September 16th um, of 2021. Uh, Justine Marie Johnson, 22, uh, from Oscoda, Michigan, attended her preliminary hearing Monday morning in front of uh, Iosco County 23rd Circuit Court Judge David C. Riffle. Um, it just says... So there are multiple hearings since I last talked to you guys. This is saying March 2nd is when this report came out. So I'm not sure if that is the Monday or if the February 4th was the Monday. So it says March 2nd, which I have been checking every week and I never saw this. Uh, March 2nd is... Wednesday so I had I don't know on Monday so if this came out on March 2nd this would have been the 28th of February maybe I think that's when her preliminary hearing was so February 28th um, was when all this happened um, Johnson's next court appearance for a status conference was also scheduled during the proceeding and will take place on or take place on Monday May 23rd at 10 a.m. Um, so I'll continue to keep you guys updated on this case um, but as of right now I have 
A uh, little bit more information. As previously reported, Johnson faces one count of hom uh, homicide felony murder punishable by a life sentence without parole and one count of first degree child abuse, uh, which carries a penalty of life in prison or any term of years. She is accused of stabbing her three-year-old daughter, Sutton M. Mosser, multiple times on September 16th, 2021, resulting in the death of the young girl. Mosser's body was initially discovered by relatives. Um, I believe that was um, Justine's younger brother. Um, Mosser, okay. Uh, Sorry about that. Kennedy came downstairs, and this is not a, a child-friendly episode. Uh, so we are going to continue on. Um, so like I said, uh, Sutton's body was discovered by uh, Justine's younger brother, um, who allegedly, uh, who alleged that he saw a human foot protruding from a garbage bag in the family's home on Cedar Lake Road. Um, I believe the garbage bag was in like a tote of some sort. Um, authorities have said that Johnson frequented this home um, and often stayed there. So this was her mother's home. Um, I guess she stayed there on and off, um, but uh, Sutton was there very often because um, her maternal grandmother watched her a lot. Um, following Johnson's arrest last September, she was arraigned in Iosco County 81st District Court, uh, where bond was denied by Judge Christopher P. Martin, who cited the very serious nature of the allegation against Johnson, which I completely agree with. Um, who knows if she would have fleed or tried to possibly commit suicide I don't know like I don't um but I think it was the right decision to deny her a uh, bond uh, she was she was then ordered in October to undergo a competency and criminal responsibility evaluation uh, Johnson appeared for a competency hearing in district court on May 11th where she was found competent to stand trial on the murder and child abuse charges um, so she cannot plead insanity now, which is good. Um, her preliminary examination occurred on February 4th, also in di district court where several witnesses and experts were called to the stand to testify. This included the Child Protective Services investigator who interviewed Johnson and stated that Johnson said that she was hallucinating at the time of the alleged uh, incident and that a cartoon character SpongeBob SquarePants on television instructed her to take her daughter's life or she herself would have been killed. I have never done any drugs, um, nor do I ever want to, especially around my child, but I would, <laughs> I don't know, I would rather die than <laughs> anything happen to my kid, so I don't know. I hope that, I don't want to say I hope that it was drugs, but I hope that she didn't just decide to kill her daughter out of no out of nowhere with no altering substance. I don't know. Johnson allegedly told the investigator that she didn't remember the uh, specifics of what happened at the time of uh, Sutton's death and that she was experiencing hallucinations due to heroin withdrawals and not sleeping for approximately two weeks. Uh, Martin granted Iosco County pr uh, Prosecutor James Baccarella uh, his request for the case to be bound over to 23rd Circuit Court where Johnson her Johnson had her preliminary uh, yeah pretrial hearing on February 28th um, so I guess that's what these updates are from. Martin also ordered the defendant to remain lodged in the uh, Iosco County Jail where she will continue to be held without bond. Um, according to 
Baccarella Johnson has maintained her innocence throughout the proceedings and is presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, so she's still saying that she's innocent. Um, I don't know. Like she can't, like she can't be innocent because of, or because of insanity. If she just, if she passed the under, yeah, she underwent a competency and criminal responsibility evaluation. So I'm not sure how she can, I don't know, can you, you can try and plead temporary insanity, I guess. I don't know. I, I hope that she gets put away and I don't know. Like there's really no... <laughs> good to come of this because either way she lost her daughter her daughter's not coming back and her family lost a niece a granddaughter and it's and a daughter so either way there's not nothing really good to come out of this but i hope that sutton gets her justice and justine johnson gets the help that she needs um, I definitely think that she should do time and reflect on what has happened and I don't, I will keep you guys updated. Um, the next hearing is Monday, May 23rd. So hopefully I'll be able to get information, um, that drops on that day or the day after and I will keep you guys updated on what happens. And yeah, I know this was a rough case and I will keep you guys updated. Um, I, I got this information from Oscoda Press. Um, I looked for a few other resources and there were a lot of like, I don't know, like Wiki, Fox News, and it was all wrong. Like they were calling Sutton um, like a him and like, saying that a sister found Sutton and they just were using wrong pronouns and it was just, I don't know, it was a lot of false information. So um, if you do want to research this more, um, I know the New York Post has a good article about it and then um, anything you can find from um, like the Oscoda Press or like anything Michigan News like is has been a really good resource um, in my searching. So if you guys, I will um, I will put my resources in the show notes if you guys want to look up any further information um, or if you guys want to try and get your updates uh, before I put out another episode. Um, you can do that as well. So I will put those in the show notes. And this has been Crime Time News. Um, thanks for listening. Sorry. Yep. Sorry, this is the case that I want, or decided to update you guys on. But um, I'm glad I finally found some updates on what is going on in this case. And... just wanted to share it with you guys. So that has been an update, um, on the Sutton Mosser case. And hopefully we'll find out more on what happens to Justine Johnson on May 23rd. So I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you for listening.